Hey everyone, welcome to the Zero Developer Channel. My name is Jason Rising and I'm a part of the Developer Evangelist team. Today I'll be walking you through how to integrate Zero webhooks into your .NET applications. This video will be broken into three sections, with the first being a general overview of what webhooks are, the second being the specifics of the Zero webhooks, and finally we'll do a walkthrough of a working solution. There are timestamps in the description, so feel free to jump to the sections that best suit you. Alright, that being said, let's get started with an overview of webhooks. Webhooks are simply event notifications that enable different web applications to communicate with each other via typically HTTP POST requests. A web application implementing webhooks will post a message to a URL when some event is triggered. The body of the request would contain useful information regarding the event. Oftentimes, web applications allow users to register their own URLs, which enables users to efficiently pipe information between different applications. One of the major benefits of this is keeping applications in sync, as we can easily notify other applications in real time when a change occurs. For instance, say we are developing an application that displays current zero invoices, and when one is paid it will turn green before being removed from the list. As we want to display these changes in real time, this is the perfect situation to leverage webhooks. We first need to let Zero know we are interested in changes to invoice data, so we subscribe to such event, typically done via an interface on the application providing the webhooks. We then provide our URL that will receive notifications, which will equate to an endpoint in our application. We will now receive a notification when the event is triggered, and we can process the body to act accordingly to keep our application in sync. And that's the entire process, hopefully that helped you get your head around the basic idea of webhooks. We will now have a quick look at the specifics of Zero webhooks before going ahead and implementing our own webhook receiver. So I'm here on the Zero webhook documentation, which is a great resource for understanding how webhooks work with Zero. There will be a link in the description if you're interested. So scrolling down a bit, the first important part to point out is the events section. If you remember from the previous section of the video, events are things that we can receive notifications for. So as of the time of this recording, Zero only provides events for create and update for either invoices or contacts. So something like detecting when an invoice is overdue is possible as we can leverage the update invoice event. But unfortunately, if we wanted to detect something like new purchase orders, it would currently not be possible. The next section outlines the JSON payload present in the request body of the notification. The first part here provides a description for each component, but let's just scroll down and view the example JSON payload. The most important part is the events array, that provides information about the event that was triggered. For instance, if we were subscribed to all available zero events, we could use the combination of event category and event type to determine the type of event, in this case an update to a contact. Resource ID also provides the ID of the entity that was involved in the event. So from this we can determine that the contact with this ID was updated in some way. As you can see there is no information that tells us what changed about this contact. So after receiving this notification we would have to do a GET request to receive this contact and manually check what changed. Tenant ID can also be useful if we have multiple organizations connected to our Zero app as you can pinpoint which organization was affected. Finally, the other components just provide some general stats regarding the notification. Before moving on, I would like to mention that the events can be batched into a single notification, so the events array may hold multiple items. So when processing the payload, we need to remember to loot through the events array and not just take the first one. Alright, so the last section here talks about a zero signature in the header. This is simply a hash of the payload sent in the notification, with the hash key being a key we generate when subscribing to events. This allows us to validate the notification and ensure that it came from zero. I will elaborate on this in more detail during the implementation. And talking about implementation, I think we have enough knowledge to start creating our zero webhook receiver. So let's get started. For this section of the video, I will first demonstrate how to connect Zero webhooks with a working solution, and then we'll go through the code of such solution and I'll explain the logic. Now if you'd like to follow along with me, there will be a link to the GitHub repo in the description. So this is the project here, it's an MVC web application, 
Currently, this project is not linked with Zero Webhooks. In order to connect it up, we need to give Zero a URL that will equate to our Webhooks endpoint, specified here in the Webhooks controller. Webhooks are configured within a Zero app, which means, well, we need a Zero app. Don't worry if you don't have one, as you only need a Zero developer account in order to start creating apps, which is completely free. I'll leave the link to our getting started guide in the description. So once you have your account, head over to the My Apps section on the Zero Developer Portal. You can create a new app here or use an existing one if you have any, which is what I'll do. I'll select my Webhook Demo app. Now you should see a Webhooks link to the side, and this will load the Webhooks configuration page. Here we can select the events we wish to subscribe to. Our solution can handle all events, so I'll subscribe to both. The next section here is to specify our URL to send notifications to. Now our application is running on localhost, which Zero cannot send notifications to. So to get around this, I'll be using ngrok, which essentially tunnels network traffic to our local host. Installing ngrok is very straightforward. Just head over to their website, click download, extract the executable to some folder, and add the executable path into your system environment variables. I'll have some guides in the description. So assuming you have ngrok, all we need to do is jump into any terminal and type the following command. Make sure the port number is the number your application is running on. These links under forwarding are the available URLs that are, well, forwarding to our local host. So if I open one of these, we should see our home page. Pretty cool. So we have our URL now, so let's give it to zero. Before we press save, we need to add the specific endpoint to the URL, which in this case is webhooks. This will generate a webhook key, which will be used to validate incoming notifications. So let's copy this for later. We also have an intend to receive button, which will send dummy notifications and check that we are returning the correct responses. If successful, it will change to an OK status. So how do we know what to return? Well, this is a good time to open up the documentation again. Under the Server Setup section, we are provided with a list of requirements our endpoint must meet. We can see that we must return a 200 HTTP status code when the signature is valid, and we must return a 401 when it's invalid. With that, we also have to make sure we return these status codes within 5 seconds. Let's jump back into the code and walk through the implementation up to the verification of the signature. So the first thing I need to do is paste my generated webhook key into the webhook section I added into the app settings.json file. You'll also notice I'm storing the header key for the signature here. Under config, I have created a class that matches the app settings, and also added a reference to the class in startup under configure services. This is so we can reference values in app settings from other classes. So let's have a look at the webhooks controller, which holds all the logic. This index method is what is called when a notification is sent. We know that notifications contain a JSON payload in the request body, so the first thing to do is get that info. This is done in the getRequestBody method, which just uses a stream reader. We also want to get hold of the signature, which is located in the header. Webhook settings .value zero signature is referencing that signature value in the app settings. With these two pieces of information, we have enough to validate the signature. So let's have a look at the verify signature method. We first convert the generated webhook key and the payload string to a byte array and pass these values into the hash. We convert the result back to a string and check that it is equal to the signature. We return a boolean depending on the result. Going back up, we can see that if returned false, we return a 401 unauthorized, and if valid, we return a 200 OK. That by itself is enough to achieve an OK status on the intent to receive button. So let's try it out now. And there we go. All that is left now is to actually process the JSON payload. Implementation here will be dependent on your context. For our solution, I will showcase how to implement background workers for asynchronous processing of the payload. This is important as we only have 5 seconds to respond. So going back to the code, the first thing I am doing is adding the payload to a queue. 
This is to help organize the processing and ensure that incoming notifications are dealt in the correct order. The queue is defined as a concurrent queue to ensure thread safety, as we'll be using this on multiple threads due to the background workers. You'll also notice I'm converting the JSON string to a payload object. The payload object is defined under DTO and simply maps the components of the JSON payload. This was done to help organize the code and provide a single source for defining the payload structure. After converting and adding to the queue, we call a background worker to run. This worker is defined above. You'll notice in the constructor I append something to do work. What I am appending is actually a method, defined down here. When the worker runs, it will first call this method. As such, whatever we do here will be done asynchronously. For now, I am calling another method that simply prints the event type and category from the payload object. And that's it. If we test our app, we should see some payload details being printed to the console. I'll go ahead and edit an invoice. There we are. Give it a few seconds and we should see it coming through. And there it is. We can also see the print statement for returning was called before the payload details, indicating that our asynchronous processing is in fact working. Brilliant. So that brings us to the end of the video. I hope you enjoyed and learned something new about Zero Webhooks. If you have any questions, please let me know in the comments below. Also, don't forget that the working solution is linked in the description, along with an article version of this video. If you want to learn more about programming in .NET in regards to Zero, I highly recommend checking out our .NET sample app. The sample app will showcase how to interact with the various API sets. Along with this, it also provides some nifty features like showing the raw JSON response from the API. Alright, that's enough from me. I hope you have a great day and I'll see you in the next one.